I finally got my hands on an Intel N200 CPU. A couple months back, we did a video covering a Minus 4 Mini PC that has an N100 CPU, and it is phenomenal, especially compared to the Celerons. It is a huge upgrade, and I was really excited to check out this N200, and after checking it out, my god, is it a huge upgrade from the N100 for a variety of use cases, particularly what I actually like to use these things for, and that is setting them up as little mini servers or media streaming boxes, whether that be with Plex, Jellyfin, MB, whatever. So B-Link here sent over this, their EQ13 disclaimer. They sent it to me for free to make this video, test it out, all that fun stuff. So do note that. But in this video, what we're gonna be doing is talking about my experience with it, some of the things that I tested, tried out, the kind of process I had to go through to actually get hardware encoding to work. But before any of that, I do want to talk about the benchmarks. Let's just dive straight into that. Over here on our next cloud instance, I have a chart that I've continuously been building since our last video covering the N100 and N95. We got to add the N200 here all released at the same time. And probably the biggest difference of these three CPUs is how much power that they use and how much power that they can use. And by that, I mean the TDP here is kind of the average power range. And you could see the N95 is a little bit more powerful than the N100, but it does sit at a TDP of 15 watts. So it's gonna use more power continuously while both the N100 and N200 have a TDP of only six watts. But with that, the N100, when doing a test such as Geekbench, maxed out about 15 to 16 watts, while this N200 had more access to power because it did max out somewhere in between like 20 and 25 watts when doing some more uh, intensive benchmarking. We could kind of see that down here in the chart the N95 does have a little bit better of a multi-core performance against the N100 and barely better single core, but the N200 has marginally better single core performance while the multi-core performance is dramatic. That's about 600, 700 points more than the uh, N100 there. And we can see that within the base frequency, the N200 has a base of one gigahertz, which is much lower than the other two here, but it maxes out higher than the other two. And when it comes to the GPU execution units, we do have 32 compared to the 16 and 24 of the other models. So what does that mean with actual graphical performance? That means it is slightly better. The first thing I did just cause I had to was test it out in Fortnite and that uh, no difference. It's basically unplayable to play Fortnite on there, but we did see a huge difference in the Minecraft performance compared to the uh, N100 that we tested. With the N200, I actually had it plugged into a 4K capture card, and at that full 4K resolution, it was still playable at about 25 to 30-ish frames per second, and this is, of course, at kind of lower settings, but when I shrunk the window down to a normal kind of like 1080p size range, it performed immaculate. I mean, I was getting around the kind of 90 frames per second range with those kind of lower settings. So I could have increased the settings a good bit and still been in the 50 to 60 frame per second range. Another really good use case for this is with emulation. Uh, I went ahead, loaded up the PlayStation 2 emulator and put in my uh, personal old favorite game and that is Jack 2. And that in the uh, resolution, the native PlayStation 2 resolution, was locked in at a solid 60 frames per second without any noticeable lag, stuttering, or anything like that. So when it comes to the kind of generation of the PlayStation 2 and older, you're going to have absolutely no problem using this as a really nice kind of a retro pie or just emulation machine if that's something you're interested in. And then while I had Windows and both Ubuntu on it for a while, I did test just the kind of day-to-day -day performance, saw no issues whatsoever. Even with YouTube playback, there was noticeable differences between this and the N100. For example, when uh, comparing the 4K performance, the N100 was dropping frames quite a bit in 4K, while the N200 only had a couple dropped frames per 100. It wasn't noticeable at all. While it was noticeable on the N100, it was a little stuttery for 4K on this and 200, it was pretty smooth. Dropping it to 1440p, there was virtually no dropped frames on the N200. There was a couple on the N100, but again, for this case, both of them were fairly smooth and neither of them had any issue performing at the, uh, or streaming 
1080p video from YouTube. So this PC is really good if you're gonna be browsing the web, doing general office tasks, maybe even some very light video editing. But when you get into more kind of graphically intensive creative stuff, whether that be like 3D modeling, more intensive video editing with a lot of effects and layers on your timeline, things like that, you're going to definitely want a better computer, something with an actual like non-integrated graphics card. Now, speaking of actual video playback transcoding, I did spin up Jellyfin and I do have to note, first I did try to do this on just the Ubuntu desktop 24.04 and I was not successful at all. To get this to work properly, I ended up throwing on the Ubuntu server version 22. 2.04 in which they actually had the proper drivers from Intel and all that. Uh, once I did get that installed, I had to manually upgrade the kernel from 5 point something to 5.19. And then when my kernel was manually upgraded, I then had to follow the Intel guide on how to actually install all their drivers. And once that was done, I was able to load up this tool. This is my active instance with Intel GPU top. If I back out of here real quick, what I did is I linked up this network share that I have with all my movies and I spun up a uh, Docker container of Jellyfin enabled hardware transcoding with just with the uh, uh, device variable to actually link that and get it to work. And this right here is my server. Now I was testing this out quite a bit just now. And all these videos that I was recently playing are 4K videos. And one of the big reasons to use hardware transcoding is to bring quality down. So you can see this is a 4K, 120 megabits, bringing it down to 10. That requires some local hardware transcoding. So if I open this back up, you can see, oh boy, it is working. But even with how hard it's working, there is absolutely no stuttering or anything in the actual media playback. Play another one. And these are big 4K files that it's transcoding down so you could view it on mobile or whatever without using much data. And it's three of these streams that it can handle. If I do open up another one, we will notice it start to kind of stutter quite a bit. And if we go ahead and drop these down to 720 at four megabits, at this rate, it can handle five continuous streams transcoding down from 4K to 720p. So this little mini PC for the price, it's uh, listed here at $259, is a little beast. So from there, I do want to talk about the EQ13 just a little bit. One thing that I really, really love about it that you probably saw if you saw my little, uh, YouTube short of uh, me unboxing it is the built in like actual power supply. Usually with these little mini PCs, you either have a really big plug-in or that external power brick hanging around. This one's actually built into it. Thank you. So that's a huge plus. And then looking at some of the IO on the front, we have a single USB, our auxiliary port and a USB-C as well as our power button here. And then on the back, we have three additional USBs, two HDMIs, and two gigabit LAN. Unfortunately, it's not 2.5, but for the price, I kind of expect it to be gigabit. The fact we get two of them is cool because then you could use it for something like turning it into your firewall or setting up Proxmox on it and giving a dedicated uh, networking interface to one of your uh, containers or a virtual machine. And just overall, the thing is small, it's sleek, it's incredibly quiet, even when I was running all those uh, transcoding tests, I didn't really hear it at all. So that's definitely a perk. But yeah, if, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about the N series processors, I went into that far more detail in my video covering the Minus form and the N100. So I do recommend you check that out. Some big takeaways is all four cores on these devices are efficiency cores. And a kind of con is it is only single channel memory. So that does kind of limit the amount of RAM that the integrated graphics is able to use. But again, do check out that video for a more deep dive into that. And I will leave you on a question. What is your favorite way to kind of set up a media streaming thing? Is it to have two separate devices, have a separate NAS or whatever that store all your files and have a separate machine for your streaming? Or like me right now, actually I am kind of doing that. I do have a NAS that has all the actual files, but I do have a uh, single board computer. It's the Lati Sigma. This guy, I have Proxmox running on this single board computer, which this has its own Plex container. And for me, it's working pretty good. So what do you do? What do you like to do? What should I do? <laughs> With all that again on screen, I will have that Minus Form video as well as a, another video that you might want to check out if you're interested in setting up Jellyfin for yourself. With all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and 
good. Bye.